En el podcast de hoy vas a aprender los tipos de llamadas que hay en un call center, así como también expresiones que puedes usar cuando escribes tu carta de intención o cover letter. También vas a aprender la diferencia entre apply for and apply to. Vas a aprender también a cómo decir recibir llamadas y no es recibir y a cómo hacer llamadas y no es to call. También vas a aprender a diferenciar entre una venta y un descuento. La diferencia entre cuentas de mantenimiento y cuentas de soporte técnico y mucho más. Así que no puedes perderte nuestro podcast número 5 el cual va cargadito de mucho vocabulario para call center. Mira, ya llevamos cinco podcasts y me gustaría saber cuáles son tus comentarios sobre este tipo de formato para aprender vocabulario de call center. ¿Te es útil? ¿No te es útil? Porque si no te es útil, entonces tenemos que hacer otra cosa para que vayas aprendiendo más vocabulario para call center y estés preparado para una futura entrevista de trabajo en ese call center. Te comento que aún tenemos la promoción de los $29 por la compra de tu libro de práctica de llamadas para call center. Y recuerda de que de esta manera nos ayudas a seguir creando más contenido como este. Para la compra del libro, link en la descripción. Alrighty, so let's get started everybody with today's podcast. Alright, podcast number five. What is going on, Agents for Call Center? How may I help you? What is going on, Agents for Call Center? This is another podcast where we are going to learn everything about call center vocabulary. And in today's podcast, guys, we are going to talk about call types. One more time, call types. You will know everything about call types how you can use them, what do they mean, their definition, and also you're going to be able to understand vocabulary for call center. And we're starting right now. But before we start, let me ask you two questions. Question number one is going to be the following. Pay attention to this, everybody. Listen, listen, listen. What is the department that helps customers with an update on his or her information. Let me repeat it one more time. What is the department that helps customers with an update on his or her information? That is question number one. Question number two, everybody, listen, listen, and please let me know in the comments down below what your answers are. Question number two, guys, is what is the department that helps customers with computer problems? What is the department that helps customers with computer problems? Let me know in the comments if you already have the answer. But if you don't have the answer, make sure you stay all the way through to today's podcast because you will know what the answer is. As you may know, we are going to start reading our letter at normal speed. And after that, we are going to read the letter again but this time will be at slower speed. So the letter starts as following. <music> to whom it may concern. I'm writing about the job posting of your website. I would like to apply for the opening and billing. My last job was in customer service department for JPO Industries. I primarily took inbound calls. However, I made some outbound calls as well. I gave customers advice and helped them file complaints with the company. Before that, I worked in outbound sales. I primarily handled customers' orders and completed transactions. I also worked briefly in accounts maintenance. I see that the position requires some work in tech support. I don't have experience in this area, but I'm willing to learn. Thank you for considering my application. Sincerely, Sharon Valero. What do you think about that future agent for call center? Were you able to understand the whole letter? Can you tell me in the comments down below, what is the department that helps customers with an update on his or her information? Or can you tell me in the comments down below, 
what is the department that helps customers with computer problems. If you were not able to understand, we are going to do it again, but this time at slower speed. Let's do it. To whom it may concern, I'm writing about the job posting on your website. I would like to apply for the opening in Berlin. My last job was in the customer service department for JPO Industries. I primarily took inbound calls. However, I made some outbound calls as well. I gave customers advice and helped them file complaints with the company. Before that, I worked in outbound sales. I primarily handled the customers' orders and completed transactions. I also worked briefly in account maintenance. I see that the position requires some work in tech support. I don't have experience in this area, but I am willing to learn. Thank you for considering my application. Sincerely, Sharon Valero. Okay, so we have it just right there. Future agent for call center. We have it at slower speed. Now, there are some expressions. There are some words that I want to go through in today's podcast. And the first expression that I want you to pay attention, everybody, is the following. Pay attention to the line. To whom it may concern. That is the first expression. To whom. T-O space W-H-O-M. To whom it may concern. May, it's a verb. It's a modal verb. To whom it may concern. All right, so when do we use this expression? We use this expression whenever we are writing a letter to a person that we don't know his or her name. You are going to write to whom it may concern when you are writing a letter and you don't know what is the name of the recipient. What is the name of the person who is going to be receiving your letter? Now, why would you like to write a letter? You might use to whom it might concern because you are writing a cover letter for a job application. And obviously, because you are applying to a call center, you might not know what is the name of that person that you are writing to. However, future agents for call center, you can also use the following statements. Instead of using to whom it might concern, you can also use dear and the first name of the person. In my example, dear Nestor. If you already know the name of the person that you are writing to, you can use dear, D-E-A-R, dear, and the first name of the person, Dear Nestor. Or you can also use the last name of the person. Instead of saying Dear Nestor, you can say Dear Artola or Dear Mr. Artola, in my case, right? Now, but if you don't know the name of the person or the last name of the person, you can go with the job position title. That's right. You can use, instead of saying, Dear Nestor or Dear Artola or Dear Mr. Artola because you don't know the name or last name of the recipient, you can use Dear Trainer in my case. But if you are writing to a call center for a position you are interested in, it will be something like Dear Operation Manager, Dear Site Recruiter, Dear 
IBEX recruiter, dear Axido recruiter, and so on. So that's the first expression that I wanted you to learn, to whom it may concern. Let's move on to our next expression. Okay, listen up. I'm writing about the job posting on your website. And here's the word, or the two words, job posting. Job, J-O-B, job, posting, P-O-S-T-I-N-G, posting. A job posting is an advertisement. That's right. It's an advertisement for an open job position in a call center. Now, what's the purpose of a job posting? The job posting purpose is to inform you, the potential candidate, about the new opening. The idea of the job posting is to attract more people and apply, they can apply to a job position within the call center. Now, in a job posting, you can find the job title. For example, customer service representative. You can find the job location. For example, if it's a work from home opportunity or if it's a work from site opportunity. And if it's a work from site opportunity, obviously, you will find where will be the site located. It could be in Leon. It could be in Manawa, in the case of you are in Nicaragua, but it could be in the city where you live in. That will be the job location. Also, you are going to find the qualifications needed for the position. You are going to find what are those requirements that you will need for a position. In a job posting as well, you are going to find everything about the call center. You are going to find about the benefits the call center is going to give you if you decide to work for them. Last but not least, in a job posting, you are going to find the instructions on how to apply for that position. Remember that when you go to a job opening, you will find all this information, job title, job location, qualifications, benefits that you're going to be receiving, and the instructions on how you should apply. Let me give you an example. IBEX, for example, one of the instructions that they have is that you must submit your papers in Spanish. However, if you go and apply for Concentrix, they say that you must submit your papers in English. Those are the instructions that they have in a job posting. So we have the second expression of today's podcast for call center vocabulary, job posting. Next line, I would like to apply for the opening in billing. Apply. A-P-P-L-Y. What does it mean, apply? Apply means to make a formal application, to make a formal request. When there is a job opening in a call center, you must apply for that job opening. You must tell the person when you send your information that you are interested in that opportunity. That's why... When you apply, you are making a formal application. You are making a formal request. And you're telling the recruiter, you're telling the people offering the job posting that you are the candidate who will like to fulfill the requirements that they are looking for. Now, I want you to understand what's the difference between apply to and apply for. Pay attention to this because a lot of you make this common mistake. Apply to, you use apply to when you are going to talk about 
the place. When you are going to use the where, where you are applying. And apply for is used when you talk about the purpose of your application. So if you say something like, I will apply for another call center if I don't get the job this week. That is incorrect. That is wrong. Because you are not going to apply for another call center. A call center is a place. So the right way for you to say it will be, I will apply to another call center. You see? I will apply to another call center if I don't get the job this week. So please, 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 please don't say, I will apply for another call center because that's it's wrong. It will be applied to. Why? Because call center, it's a place. And that's why you need to use to. Let's check the following example. Okay? You can apply to the job online. To the job online, that's another mistake over there. Because to the job online is nowhere. Is the purpose. It is the why you are applying. So what, when you ask yourself why you are applying, you need to use for. So you can apply for the job online instead of saying to. So instead of saying you can apply to the job online, you must say you can apply for. That is the right one. You can apply for the job online. Was that clear enough? I hope so. And you can stop making these mistakes when you are speaking in English. Let's move on to our next line. I would like to apply for the opening in building. What is the opening? The opening is the vacancy, which a call center desires to fill in. The opening is the position that the call center is ready, is given to you the opportunity for you to work with them. Look at this. When a call center recognizes the needs for a new employees or for a group of new employees, the person in charge, I'm talking about the supervisor, the operation manager, or the hiring department, will create an advertisement, will create a job opening, and that is called the opening. So when you are hanging around and you see some ads and those advertisements states that there is a job opportunity for you to work in a call center, that is an opening. That's a vacancy for you to check their website and decide whether or not to give the opportunity to this call center. Opening. All right, cool. And the same sentence says, I would like to apply for the opening in billing. Billing, guys. B-I-L-L-I-N-G. Billing. Billing refers to the process of sending invoices to customers and request them to pay before or after the date the customer should be paid. Billing, everybody, is the process of sending people's bills, asking them to pay the money they own. Billing, everybody, is when, for example, a company sends you the invoice, the bill of the service or the product that you have bought. That is billing. Now, there are some call centers that they need billing agents. And your main job is to keep on track on all those customers' accounts and make sure that they pay on time. That was billing, everybody. Okay, now let's move it on to our next sentence. My last job was in the customer service department for JPO Industries. I primarily took inbound calls. Take inbound calls. An inbound call is that type of call that customers 
initiate. That is the type of call when the customer call the contact center or the customer call the call center. That is inbound call. So in other words, you received the call. Example of this type of positions are customer service, pretensions, and technical support. So take inbound calls is when you receive the call. The customer picks up his phone, dials your company's number, and you answer the call. That is take inbound calls. Inbound. I-N-B-O-U-N-D. If you worked for customer service, you would take inbound calls. If you worked for retentions, you would take inbound calls. And if you were for technical support, you would take inbound calls. Next line. However, I made some outbound calls as well. Make outbound calls. An outbound call is initiated by the agent. Most likely, this agent will be a sales representative or an agent that works in the billing department. Outbound calls are made by those agents who focus on sales, who focus on prospects, who focus on telemarketing or asking money. That's right. There are some campaigns which main opportunity, which main task is to request money from the public. And that is called found raising. There are some campaigns that their main job is to ask money. For example, there are some NGO programs that they look after the environment and they will contact people with a lot of money to tell them to donate some of their money for charity. And you are making an outbound call. So in other words, when you receive a call, that will be inbound call. And when you dial a phone number to talk to our customer, that will be make outbound calls. Good. Let's continue. I gave customers advice and helped them file complaints with the company. Advice. Pay attention to this because some of you are making the same mistake over and over and over again. Advice. We have advice with C, as in Charlie, and we have advice with S, as in Zen. Advice. A-D-V-I-C-E. Advice is an opinion, super agents. It's that opinion that someone gives to you, an opinion that someone offers to you about something that you should do in a particular situation. That is an advice, a recommendation, in other words. It's a noun. But also, we say... Advice with S, A D V I S E, when we use it as a verb, is when you give someone an advice with C. Advice as a verb is recommending, counseling, advising. So remember, we have advice with C, which is the noun, and advice with S, which is the verb. Next line. Before that, I worked in outbound sales. I primarily handled the customer's orders and I completed transactions. I also worked briefly in account maintenance. So let's move on with the following words. Sale without S and sales with S. Pay attention to that. One more time. Sale. Sales. A sale could refer to a specific event at a store when prices are discounted, when something is cheaper, when the price of something gets 
lowered from the normal price. That will be sale, no S. For example, you can make a sale or you can lose a sale. I sell 10 iPhones this week. I lose the sale of the iPhones this week. On the other hand, we have sales with S, which is the plural. Some examples that we can use with sales are sales performance. And what is the sales performance? Sales performance is how much a company sells. In the first year, the company sold 300 iPhones. But on the second year, the company sold 600 iPhones. So this company on its sales performance did a very good job. You can also use sales forecast. How much a company expects to sell the sales forecast. In 2025, for example, Nesting ACC is expecting to sell 300 books per month. That is the sales forecast. But we have other phrases like an increase in sales or a growth in sales. Example of that, the company is expecting a 20% increase in sales next year. On the other hand, not always everything is going to be optimistic. We also have the negative side. We have the pessimistic side. When we have the pessimistic side, we're going to use a fall in sales or a drop in sales. A fall in sales, A-F-A-L, sales, or a drop in sales, D-R-O-P. Some jobs, for example, may be cut following a big drop in sales. We have another expression, which is the volume of sales, which is the amount of service, the amount of goods a company sells. Because it's high volume of sales, the company can keep prices low. Let's continue. I primarily handle customers' orders and completed transactions. Customers' orders. C-U-S-T-O-M-E-R-S. Customers' orders. O-R-D-E-R-S. Orders. The customer order future agents for call center is the number of the person, is the number of the customer that is in charge of receiving the order, that is in charge of receiving the product, that is in charge of receiving the service your company is offering, your call center is offering. That is the customer's order. Sometimes when a customer calls in, inbound call, and he or she asks about a status. He or she asks about information of his or her account. You might ask for the customer's order, which is a number. And that number is entitled. That number is connected to the person who is calling, most likely, most of the time. And in a customer order, you can find the delivery date, the quantity, the price, and sometimes links for warranties for further questions that customers may have about his or her orders, customers' orders. Let's continue. Before that, I worked in outbound sales and primarily handled customers' orders and completed transactions. Transactions, future agent for call center is buying or selling something. It's a business deal. Transaction, in other words, is when you go on Amazon, for example, and you buy anything you need and you send your money through your credit card. Amazon receives that and Amazon sends you a product or sends you the service. That will be considered a transaction. It's the complete process of buying and selling. Another transaction could be, guys, is when you are going to buy the role play practice book, the one that we have for you to practice role play days and areas for call centers. So you send the price of the book through our payment methods and we send you the book. Once you send the money and you receive the book, that is considered a transaction. The plural of transaction 
would be transactions with S at the end. Transactions. T R A N S A C T I O N S. Good. Next line. I also worked briefly in account maintenance. Account maintenance. Account maintenance, future agents for call center is holding or maintaining an account on behalf of any person. That means to manage. That means to track. That means to create reports. That means to go through a customer's account and use a software. Example of that, when a customer calls in and the customer requests an update on his or her address, you are doing an account maintenance. You are updating the information in the software you have from the call center. Another example will be when the customer calls in and she or he requests a change on the price. So you go into the customer's account and you manage the customer's account by updating the new price. It could be higher or it could be lower. That depending on the transactions that you have done with the customer. And listen up, future agents. Account maintenance is key if you would like to answer the two questions I already asked you at the very beginning of today's podcast. Next line. I see that the position requires some work in tech support. I don't have experience in this area, but I'm willing to learn. Tech support, T-E-C-H, support, S-U-P-P-O-R-T. A service provided by a company, software company or hardware company, which provides help and advice with C about their products to customers. If you have a smartwatch and you don't know how you use it, you will need some help from the tech support. If you have a computer and your computer is acting up, your computer is malfunctioning or your computer is not working properly, you get in contact with the tech support department and they will help you out in what you need. The tech support. And now, listen up. What is the department that helps customers with an update on his or her information? If you got it correctly, the department is the account maintenance department. Why? Because in the account maintenance department, you are going to update every single piece of information you needed for the customer. You're going to do it on your one. And our second question was, what is the department that helps customers with computer problems? And that department is tech support. Let me know in the comments if you got it correctly. And I hope you have learned something new today. Thank you very much for watching Future Agent for Call Center and See you next time. Bye-bye, guys.